Okay, so graphing tangent secant and their co-functions, before we even jump into that, I guess a couple of basic common sense ideas, and we use this so much in calculus, one over big, one over something very, very large is small. Uh, that really doesn't apply as much in today's lesson, but it's always good to review that. This, however, is very pertinent. One over small then would be big. And you might wonder why I'm bringing that up. Well, the graph of tangent has that occur very much so. And so do these other graphs that we're dealing with. Hopefully you'd agree that tangent is actually sine over cosine. It's sine over cosine. As soon as you see a fraction, that introduces the possibility, of course, that you might be dividing by zero, especially if you're dealing with functions that can change. And we all know cosine can equal zero. And that gets to be a little bit of an issue. So as we begin to, to graph this thing out, I guess the very first thing I want to point out to you, and we're going to see this in just a moment, is that the period for cotangent and for tangent are not 2 pi, but 1 pi. And uh, as we begin to think about this, you can wonder where cosine might become 0. Hopefully, we're familiar with our trig values. And, uh, you know, where would cosine uh, become 0? At pi over 2. And likewise, we could go in a negative direction as well, negative pi over 2. This right here is one period of tangent that we're looking at. Uh, we have boundaries, vertical asymptotes, actually, at positive pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. If you were to substitute that in, tangent is undefined. Uh, if you tried to work it out on your calculator, your calculator would give you an error message. It would say, you can't take the tangent of pi over 2. Uh, and uh, what's happening is if we just fill in a few other points, at 0, we'd get sine of 0 over the cosine of 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. At pi over 4, the most famous tangent value of all, that would be 1. Technically, sine and cosine would both be root 2 over 2. Uh, if I plugged in negative pi over 4 in that fourth quadrant, uh, tangent is negative there, and uh, you'd get sine to be a negative, yet cosine to be a positive. You can begin to see this uh, graph taking shape. Uh, but again, at pi over 2, I guess what I'm trying to really let you know, cosine is small around pi over 2. Uh, so that means 1 over small is big. You would continue to see growth going upwards. So our graph, guys, looks somewhat of a cubic function. It's certainly not a cubic function, or it's like we, we try to joke around and call it the John Travolta or the disco function. Uh, but listen, you know, it, it has boundaries. It, it definitely can expand to the right or towards the left. We can real quickly take a peek and see that the tangent of x, and by the way, all you physics students, make sure you're on radians. And while we're at it, let's graph zoom trig. Nice, friendly window right there. You can begin to see how uh, that tangent graph is actually very periodic. It continues to cycle through that same shape, uh, but our period will only go one pi unit long. Uh, so that, guys, uh, is definitely worth memorizing, especially what I just wrote out over here. Uh, that's your basic parent function for tangent. Uh, in a similar way, when you look at cotangent, well, you might wonder what's happening here. This would be cosine over sine, and uh, you might wonder how that's going to change things. Well, now we're saying where could sine equal zero, and uh, that's at zero itself, and also at uh, pi, and also at two pi. But uh, if you drew in vertical asymptotes at x equals 0 and x equals pi, uh, suffice it to say, you would have one cycle of the cotangent function. And uh, of course, at pi over 4, you might not be too surprised to know that the cotangent of pi over 4 is 1. 
just like tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Plug in pi over 2, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and yet the sine of pi over 2 is 1. 0 divided by 1 is just going to get you 0. And if we went another step in between, we'd be at 3 pi over 4. Hopefully we know that uh, the cotangent of 3 pi over 4, that's cosine over sine, uh, we're going to have negative 1 right there. So definitely a very similar shape, but like a reflection about the x-axis compared to the shape of tangent, and also a very different beginning and ending location. We're beginning at 0 and ending at pi. And uh, again, a friendly reminder, you might say, well, I don't see cotangent on my calculator screen, uh, and, and you won't find it. How do you think we could type that in for y1? You'd have to go 1 over tangent, or you could even type in cosine over sine if you'd like. Uh, but sure enough, if you hit graph now, you would get this shape that we were just talking about, right? So these are, again, what we call the parent functions. And uh, let's go ahead real quickly. Okay, let's take a look, comparing this graph of cotangent to what's happening at uh, example one. You know that when you actually are looking at problems in your assignment, guys, as you're doing problems in your book, you're almost never going to be asked to just graph tangent or cotangent in and of themselves, you're going to do some kind of transformation to them. And uh, I guess maybe the first thought that we could ponder is what's happening with this pi? You know, obviously you look at that and that's pi times x. But I hope you're remembering our little mnemonic with x files. Uh, you know, x files is hopefully a helpful hint to let you know that whenever you're doing arithmetic to x, of course you affect x coordinates, but you work with reverse logic. You look here and you'd say, oh, I'm going to multiply all my x coordinates by pi. Uh, quite the opposite, you're going to divide all x coordinates by pi. Divide all x coordinates by pi. Now at this point, you might wonder, so why are you bringing that up? Well, look in the top right corner of the screen. We just graphed the cotangent function. Take all x values and divide out a pi. Now, if you were to do that, you can see pretty quickly that you no longer have a vertical asymptote at pi. You have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And uh, over here, right in the middle, would be 1 half and 1 fourth. See, every x value has had its pi divided out. The y values have remained unchanged. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can see pretty quickly. Forget the sloppiness right there. Ah, how about we erase that? It's a little bit better before little bit messy right there, but you get that main idea. Same general shape. Uh, and uh, you, know, you want to show those values where uh, you are achieving 1 and negative 1. Uh, in a similar way, you could talk about your period now is pi over b, absolute value of b. You're dividing pi by pi. Your period would be 1, Okay, in case you were ever asked that. All right, well, let's take a look at example two. Comparing what we see right now, this problem at hand, with the parent function, with y equals the tangent of x up in that top left corner. Uh, obviously, we see two numbers here. We see a 3 and a 2. You might not be too surprised to guess that, hey, you know what, we're going to have two transformations. Always work inside first with your x transformations. And what do you think that 2 is really going to do? We're going to do what, really? We're going to divide all x coordinates by 2. 
And uh, what about the 3 out in front? What do you think that means? Multiply all y coordinates by 3. Uh, so talking about transformations, uh, this is a great explanation as to talk about the changes that occur. Uh, but if you were to you know, read most textbooks, they'd say there'd be a horizontal compression. Uh, the graph will get smushed in horizontally and a vertical stretch. Uh, so all of your y values are, are uh, you know, getting multiplied by that 3. So let's see if we could quickly make a nice rough sketch and see what's going on here. Uh, you can see that all of your x values here get uh, divided by 2, or they get multiplied by a half. So when you're at pi over 2, that's now going to be at pi over 4. Divided by 2 is the same thing as multiplying by a half. That's your new uh, value where you'll have a vertical asymptote. Over here, you'd also have negative pi over 4. Okay? Uh, look at pi over 4. You divide that by 2 right in the middle. You're at pi over 8. There's negative pi over 8. And 0, of course, if you divide that by 2, you're still at 0. Vertically, you no longer have y values at 1. You would have them get moved all the way up to 3 or negative 3. So you can see what's happening. You definitely are stretched out quite a bit, and it would look just like so. Are we doing OK? Do you know you could plot a point or check a point to make sure you're right? I keep bringing that up, guys, because I think sometimes that is so very often the case. Kids get nervous. They'll say, wow, I sure hope I didn't make a silly mistake. I sure hope I, I didn't go in the wrong direction. Well, look, real quickly, you're making a bold statement. You're saying, when I plug in pi over 8 for my x, the y value I should get should be 3. Well, check it. 2 times pi over 8. What's 2 times pi over 8? Pi over 4. What's the tangent of pi over 4? 1. And 1 times 3 is 3. Uh, so you can do that as a way to get some assistance. So uh, this is a, a nice quick way, just reinforcing the transformations that you can see. Guys, real quickly, let's go to the back. Uh, secant and cosecant have periods of 2 pi in general if you don't have a transformation about them. And I hope you remember that the way to graph secant is first to graph which function? Cosine. So look, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say first graph y equals cosine of x, but please do it lightly and do it in a dotted format. Cosine begins up pi. At pi over 2, it would come down. At pi, we'd be down here at negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, we'd be back at the axis. Over here is 2 pi, we'd be back up high. We could go negatively also. We could say at negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2. You could continue to more or less trace out this general shape for cosine. And please graph it lightly in a dotted format. This isn't the graph that we're asked to really create. This isn't the graph that we're really asked to create. We're, we're going somewhere else. We're going to be graphing secant. Now, the cool thing about secant is wherever you have cosine crossing the sinusoidal axis, we're going to draw in vertical asymptotes here, here, and here, and here as well. Okay? 
And then we'll just finish that up. 